There are resources that you can become exposed to in this life that have the capacity to change the direction, your very consciousness in such a brutally violent way that you're changed forever. It's like a part of you dies. It's like an old version of you you kind of put to bed. And though you may take elements of him with you, the consciousness, the lens, the paradigm in which you view the world, it changes forever. And at the end of this, I'm going to give you the resource that had that kind of effect on me. But first, I wanted to share with you this particular post that has a visceral, a visceral change on your very consciousness. So let me begin. Hello brothers, today I will share with you my most favorite benefit of SR, the upgrade in your very consciousness. This is not widely spoken about in this subreddit, but I'm very sure that each and every one of you has experienced this if you have practiced this for a profound period of time. This benefit is the only reason why I continue to practice abstinence and celibacy. Simply put, the concepts in the mind are getting eliminated and the realization of what reality is becomes an integral part of your being. It's like you take certain murky, dirty glasses off and you exchange them for a clearer one. You upgrade your prescription, so to speak, on the very uh, on, your, on your very eyes, on your very consciousness. Have you ever read a spiritual text back in your degenerate days and read the same text during your retention streak? It's a day and night difference. The book and the text are the same, but you are not the same. Retention fundamentally changes you, so how? Uh, so now your perception is very enhanced. Another analogy that you can use to denote this particular experience is foundational knowledge, meaning there are prerequisites that you have to understand prior to being exposed to certain teachings, meaning there are various books that I've read, you can kind of see behind me, um, the first time where the concepts might have been a little bit too large, a little bit too complicated for me to comprehend and palate and digest in the moment. But once I am integrating more of this kind of practice, once I am learning, once I am updating and upgrading my consciousness prescription, then the ideas become more palatable to me and I'm able to supplement them into my daily life and fundamentally change the way I live and change the way I act and behave and the success and the benefits that I get as a consequence of that new knowledge and uh, synthesize that into what I describe as wisdom. This particular individual remembers a particular quote by Swami Sivananda on the SR journey that I am also privy to. And I believe actually it was made by Yogananda, not Sivananda. I might have uh, mistaken that. Ever fed, never satisfied. Never fed, ever satisfied. And now his past self's interpretation of this particular quote, ah, in the degenerate phase, this makes so much sense. And it rhymes. It's good. A surface level conceptual understanding only of it. And then currently practicing this, oh my God, this is real. The feeling I'm having cannot be expressed in better terms. So the realization. And this particular realization is that the art of ending your suffering, the answer dwells in subtraction, not addition. I'll say that one more time. The reason why you're hurting so much and the solution is not brought about in adding anything, but rather in subtracting. Never fed, ever satisfied. Fast, abstain from stimulation. Stop, stop the input. Stop the input. Just pause, pause, be still. Never fed, stop putting so much in. Subtract, don't add. And to go a step further from just the realization is the synthesis of this knowledge into wisdom, which is action, meaning you are now practicing fasting. You are now going for fast for a day, for two days, and recognizing the peace and satisfaction that you are getting when you're constantly stimulating, when you're meditating for hours at a day because you're not inputting, you're just listening. Think about that. Meditation is, is, is not an addition. It is a, is it a, it's a subtraction. Meditation is actually the greatest austerity you can ever do, even greater than SR. 
Meditation is the greatest austerity. And that's not even my opinion. So slowly things in life in general will start making more sense. Now the impact that this feature of SR is having on my life are plentiful. No thoughts. I catch myself being in this state for a period of time. Just being. This is called pure presence, bliss happening without any effort. You're not reverting back to the mechanisms of the mind and the, and the feelings of the body. You're just, you're just here. Just be here now. Be here now. Great teachings by Ramdas on this. Old ways of perceptions and beliefs are automatically leaving me. Able to understand and predict people better because we are one step ahead in the consciousness ladder and we see down very clearly with an enhanced view. We no longer get stuck in the mire of ego and lower negative emotions like stress, apathy, and depression. We recognize them as things that we experience, but not things that we have to identify with. I'll say that one more time. We recognize them as things we can experience, not things that we have to identify with. People are picking up and carrying uh, anger, suffering, depression, lust. You recognize when you get to these levels, just just put them down. Why are you why are you carrying them with you? Would, would you not rather have freedom instead of anger? Would you not rather have freedom instead of depression? I would rather have freedom. But people go, no, no, no. It's all real, Joseph. It's all real. Just, just drop it. Just let it go. Just let it go. And the moment you realize you can just let it go, everything changes. Everything changes. Renunciation of desires, which is you know similar to that particular anecdote, and the realization that the mind is an illusion and does not exist. So naturally, most of the things that we worry about don't exist at all. Remember that you have thoughts, but you are not thoughts. Remember that you have thoughts, but you are not thoughts. Remember you have feelings, but you are not feelings. Now this benefit is so much rejoicing that I am curious on what next, uh, what is next on the upgrade of consciousness that will bring. I still become stressed. I still get jealous. Ah, you're mistaking it, my friend. You experience stress. You experience jealous, jealousy, but you are not jealousy. I'm still a normal man. My being is not completely transformed, but the effect is gradually increasing every single day. To the serious spiritual seekers, the meditators, the SR practice is a gold mine. Seriously, I've been meditating all my life and it doesn't equate to the result of SR gave you. I would push back on that in my personal opinion, but this is this is your anecdotal uh, experience. So um, I'm, I'm sure many of you, well, maybe, maybe you can tell me what has benefited you more, SR or meditation? That's a close battle for me. It's a close battle. I think one kind of complements the other in my opinion. And after having these experiences, we connect the dots and understand why all religions blame and restrict sex so much. The core message got misinterpreted, misinterpreted, pardon me, by translators of people with lower consciousness. Hmm. Hmm. And the resource I wanted to share with you gentlemen, just to kind of tie this up in a nice neat bow and give you the elements that you need to completely shift and upgrade your consciousness is I believe the fundamental understanding of presence. And I can relate to this highly commented post here the power of now by Eckhart Tolle being the shift in the consciousness that you need to change yourself and don a new version of yourself you will be forever changed in my personal opinion I was never the same once I read the power of now by Eckhart Tolle it is one of my prized possessions I I would put it up there in the top three books the only other books that come on the same level and resonate on the same energy level would be scripture, like the Bhagavad Gita, like maybe the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, maybe the Holy Bible, the Quran. Um, I I hold it in that in that kind of that self esteem. It could be scripture. It could be scripture. And I will say, out of all the books I've read, maybe maybe only a close second to the Bhagavad Gita, it has changed it has changed everything in a practical way for me. And uh, that is the best endorsement I can give. Uh, I deeply want to see you experience that paradigm. And I, I, I hope you take the time to not only understand it on an intellectual level, but you experience what Eckhart Tolle means on a, on a physical level and an experiential level.
it is not it's not an understanding it's an experiencing that is the key to the key to the uh, wisdom in that book and gentlemen these aren't theories these are facts speak soon